This video will be exploring the impact media violence has on brain development, especially with regards to neural pruning. And this is as explored by Strenziok and his colleagues in their 2009 research. Virtual reality and social media have received a significant amount of attention in recent researches that have been conducted in the field of psychology. These researches have been relating more so with the effects that exposure to violent media has on individuals. As mentioned in the previous class, as brilliant as our brains are, it responds the same way to physical and psychological stress. Having said that, there has been speculation as to whether the brain is able to differentiate between physical experiences and virtual experiences, or whether, if it ha whether the brain perceives it in the same manner. Strenziok and his colleagues in their research paper review previous researches that used fMRIs to investigate the activity of individuals who played violent video games and watched violent movies. It was found that there was reduced or underactivity in the left and right orbitofrontal cortex, also known as the OFC. The OFC is a part in the frontal lobe that is responsible for emotional control, decision-making, social norm, norms compliance, and impulse control. Underactivity in this region is then associated with reactive affective aggression, which is basically a result of dysfunctional emotional regulation. Based on their understanding of the underactivity of the OFC when exposed to media violence uh, and the gap in research on whether there is a structural correlation to it, Strenziok and his colleagues basically aimed to investigate whether there was a relationship between media violence exposure and OFC density. So they conducted this research on 37 right-handed healthy male adolescents. So these are basically boys who are from the age of 14 to about 20 and the um the criteria was that they should have had no past history of psychiatric or neurological illness they used correlational analysis to achieve the purpose of this research this basically means that they wanted to check if there was a high level of media violence exposure would the brain density increase or would it decrease in the OFC area. So the participants filled out the children's report of exposure to violence, which is a self-report scale that aims to quantify frequency of exposure to media violence. Basically, these individuals were filling out a questionnaire on how often they have been exposed to media violence. Following this, Structural images were generated of the participants using magnetic resonance imaging, basically MRIs. Using voxel-based morphometry, which I'm hoping you all know by now, is an assessment of neuronal density. Um, the researchers found a statistically significant negative correlation between exposure to violence and gray matter density in the orbitofrontal cortex. This basically means that if there is a high level of media violence exposure, there is a low density of gray matter in the orbit orbitofrontal cortex. Our brain is, and this kind of implicates on the constant changing nature of our brain in relation to our environment. The researchers suggested that the exposure to media violence may be one environmental factor that can change the brain structure by pruning the neurons. This can then have implications on the social emotional functioning of those participants. So, and individuals who are on a regular basis exposed to media violence. So with this, we can also look back at what I had mentioned last time. When we're exposed to media violence or when we're exposed to violence in general, even if it's emotional, psychological or physical, our brain responds the same way it goes on to an overdrive mode where it's trying to fight, fight, or freeze and respond to this threat from the environment. So if the brain is constantly in this state of, um, of, so if the brain is constantly in this state of, you know, being triggered, then 
higher order areas such as the frontal lobe which is responsible for higher order functioning and cognitions like decision making and impulse control those areas are not utilized as often because the brain is constantly on an autonomic uh, response system so this kind of gives the rationale as to why the neuronal connections in the orbitofrontal cortex could possibly be pruned because of the under usage of that area or the under activity in that area and um i hope this video helps you understand this research on media violence exposure and its effect it ha on the structural changes and neuroplasticity of the brain